Welcome to Spirit Talks, because your spirit talks to you. Hello and welcome to Spirit Talks. I'm Susie Byler. And I'm Maximilian Haver. And in this Spirit Talks episode, we will be talking about holding space. Thanks for joining us and enjoy. Well, I've been practicing this for many, many years, Hold this concept of holding space. My understanding of it is bringing myself completely present to what's going on for myself or somebody else without judgment and allowing that person or myself to share whatever it is that they're going through. And in witnessing what someone else is going through and holding that container of love and non-judgment for them, often things are resolved for them. Would you like to speak more about your experience of holding space? So I've done a lot of holding space in my life. And from what I understand, it's very much what you conveyed is that you're, hold, you're, you're present, you're your intention is to be active and, and there with the person, engage with whatever they're saying, but not attached to anything, not judging anything. You're simply allowing the energy to express and be released. And so it's within that container of love that what fills that space of what's being released is love because it's in that container. And so it's, it's a very... Um, simple idea but it's it's quite another thing to practice it especially if you're uh, triggered by certain energies or certain ideas or emotions that the person is expressing so it, it requires a certain degree of mastery of those things and yeah. having understanding of what they're going through and how to navigate it assists in holding that type of energy for them and for yourself, if, if you're going through a particular uh, release or transmuting for your own growth, um, that's a, a usually a more difficult thing to do because you're actively in the energy while yeah. simultaneously trying to hold a container for it. Yeah, so let's talk about holding space for yourself because it is one thing to hold that container for someone else when you're not in your inner turmoil and it's a completely different thing to hold it for yourself. Do you have any suggestions for people who want to practice holding space for themselves? Uh, holding space for yourself is m mainly about self-love and so having an understanding that you're simply experiencing a body and you're on your path and journey as a soul and not to take it so heavily anything that you know any thought or emotion or outward experience that you know has happened to you because you're 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 a soul experiencing a body you're you're here visiting and and so you can you can love yourself because it's it's not like this this like there's not like someone judging you because because inherently the nature of your soul is love. Mm -hmm. And so within that recognition, you can then approach these experiences. So if you're having anger, right, this is this is um, so you're you're actively experiencing anger and you're holding love and understanding for yourself that you're expressing this because of something you've gone through and. It's, you know, anger can be um, uh, an act of, like, lashing out to try and defend oneself, you know, so having understanding of why you're going through it and allowing it to be expressed so it's not bottled up within the emotional field or the energy body or the physical body or any of that, um, and holding that container for yourself that you, you love yourself now, you love yourself before, and you love yourself after, and not judging what you're going through, but allowing it for it to be presently expressed and experienced and then released. So holding space for yourself doesn't mean that you don't feel the emotions that are coming up. It means that you feel what you need to feel, 
And while you're doing that, you hold that kind of safety net of love surrounding everything. Yeah. And so it's, it's the, the, the container is what you're holding. You're allowing the whatever's releasing or transmuting to be expressed, but you're not holding it. You're, you're letting it go. And so right. it's this letting go, releasing, uh, letting go of that attachment, um, and, and allowing yourself to feel and not judge. So it's all of these things that you're releasing and letting go while holding this container of love for yourself. And you can call in assistance from light beings and from the creator mm-hmm. and source energy and, and whatever you have resonates. And know that you're worthy mm-hmm. in order to do any of this. I, I wouldn't say you have to. I, I mean, if you're in a place where you don't feel worth, you can still approach it. You can still make an effort to it. Like, it's, it's not an absolute you know, unless you know this, you're, you'll never have it kind of thing. It's, it's something you can still approach and uh, it, it assists you to, to have that self-worth and worthiness, but it's, it's not an absolute um, deterrent. You know, you can, you can have moments of where you're engaged with the energy, even if you're not feeling worthy, right? Because it's, worthiness is, is an energy of judgment, um, but you can still have aspects of yourself that you appreciate. So it's not like a total block to it. It, okay. it allows you to approach it. Otherwise, there would be people that would never make any progress because they'd be stuck in that energy and no way out. So one of my suggestions for people who are trying to hold space for themselves and, and learn this skill is to pretend that you're actually doing it for someone else. Because you probably are fairly adept at getting into that space where you can hold the space for someone else. And then allow yourself to feel what you need to feel, but hold that container of love and non-judgment almost as if it's someone else. And then you start to like get into that feeling of, oh, I'm holding this for myself. And then you can kind of merge and integrate where it's not like you're doing it for someone else, you're actually doing it. For yourself. So that's one of the things that I would suggest to, to begin that practice if you have difficulty holding space for yourself. And this is really a very powerful skill to have because when you know how to hold space for yourself, then you can really go deeply into your inner work, dredge up that stuff that needs to come up and out, and allow yourself to go there very quickly and with a lot of freedom. Now, is there anything you'd like to share in other ways you can use holding space, such as holding space for manifesting or receiving? Yeah, it's a a divine feminine quality of creating a container where you allow things to flow into your life or energy or experiences to flow into your life while you are not attached to the timeline, you're not attached to how, what, when, you know, all of those things, but you set an intention saying, this is what I desire to receive, and then you create that container where you hold the space for it to show up in your life in some way. So how is holding space different than the setting of the intention? Because an intention you set and release, but what is, how is holding space a different part of that? Right. Uh, Let me see if I can explain it. Oh, when you set the intention, it sends out the message. If you don't have the capacity to receive, if you don't have those pathways of receiving uh, created for yourself, then you can set all the intentions that you want. And, you know, it's most likely not going to happen. But if you are... Knowing how to create that space or that container where things can flow into your life, where you can actually receive, it's two parts. You know, you if you don't set any intentions but you have a great container, well, who knows what you're going to get. <laughs> but if you set the intention and then you are able to hold that container for receiving, then it's easier to manifest. 
Is there anything, any other ideas you'd like to share about holding space? I think one of the biggest things is to learn how to do it for yourself. It is a beautiful gift that you can give to somebody else. And it's a very, very beautiful gift that you can give to yourself when you learn how to do it for you. Because if you think about when you're going through something and you call a friend and that friend holds space for you, it's so nice to have that. And what's and there's nothing wrong with that. But what's even more powerful is when you can do that for yourself. And in a very short amount of time, you can work through something when you learn how to hold the space for yourself. And that's because of the direct connection and understanding and uh, mastery that you're expressing with what you're working through. Yeah. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us in this conversation. We'll see you next time. May you find beautiful ways to hold space for yourself and others.